Tiger fans, finally, 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 baseball is back. I guess kind of ish. It is only spring training, but you know something? It's better than not having baseball. It's better than sitting here like me today watching an Expos Braves game from 1987, which was pretty damn good, by the way, and just having nothing to watch. And just having Dan and Jay on the radio, it's like a therapeutic experience for someone like me and I'm sure people like you who like the Tigers just as much as I do. The Tigers opened up their spring training against the uh, defending NL uh, champions, the Philadelphia Phillies. And most of the most of the regulars have gotten to play over the first two days. And uh, before we get into that, I kind of wanted to touch on something. Uh, before we get too deep into the Tiger stuff, I wanted to touch on the pitch clock and people complaining about the pitch clock. People, if I read one more stupid comment on social media where people are talking about how this is ruining the game, I am just, I'm, I'm going to just lose my shit. The pitch clock is not ruining the game whatsoever. I have watched so many games from the 50s to when I started watching in 2003 on, I have watched so many games from the last 70 years. The pitch clock is no by any means necessary ruining the game of baseball. If you watch games from the 70s, 80s, hell, even 90s, and you watch the pace of the game, you watch how fast these pitchers threw, it's what the pitch clock is. And I hate to break it to you guys, there's been a rule since the 1950s Saying pitchers were supposed to have no more be no more no more than ten twelve seconds between pitches. This is literally a rule that was made in the fifties to speed up the pace of play. That pitchers were supposed to have no more than twelve seconds in between pitches to deliver the ball. It was just never enforced. But the thing was, is it didn't have to be enforced because games were two hours and some minutes long on average. And so far, the spring training games. Uh, a handful of them already been under two hours and uh, 30 minutes. I think the Tigers' first game was two hours and 17 minutes. Now, look, I get it. Everyone pisses and bitches and moans when, when rule changes are, are brought about because they're saying it's ruining the game. It's destroying its integrity. Baseball is a game that, out of all the major sports, has always lagged behind when it comes to rule changes, potentially making it better, and fans bitching the most when rule changes happen. Every single sport, the NFL goes through drastic rule changes all the time. I mean, over over the last 20 years, the NFL doesn't look anything the same. Now, I will say some of their rule changes have been bad. But every league goes through rule changes, and they try to do things to better the game. Because they have to. They adapt to their fans. They adapt to what the game needs to be to continue to, become, to grow better and do what's best for the, for the game and their fans. Every single time something goes on in baseball and people people just want to bitch and cry and moan about it. I can remember when they got rid of the first to third uh, pickoff move where you, you faked to third and threw to first. They made that illegal. I only ever seen that work one time, and Max Scherzer did it. He threw to third and got the guy at first leaning uh, thinking about running to second, and they made that illegal. That's a, that's a balk if you do that now. Everyone lost their mind. Oh my God, how are you going to do that? You're taking away that's an unfair advantage for the runners. Blah, blah, blah. Everyone pissed them out. You know how many people even know that that was a fucking rule at one time? Zero. How about the rule changes of there? you don't have to throw four balls on an intentional walk anymore? You know how many people bitched about that? With the, Oh, they should have to throw it. The pitcher shouldn't have to not have to throw four pitches. And sometimes it's really hard because every once in a blue moon on the third Wednesday of an odd month and an even week that some guy gets a hit like Miguel Cabrera did that one time against the, the Orioles. Oh, man, this is bullshit. This is, you guys are ruining all the game. You know how many people remember that that was a thing? Certainly no one that's sitting here fucking crying and bitching about a fucking pitch clock that's designed to make the game have the same pace. I was watching that game with the Braves and Expos today. That It was in 1987, and I was timing it. And I was timing both pitchers that were pitching. The average time that these two dudes took on the Braves side, there was a guy named something Palmer. It's not important. He was taking with runners on. And mind you, one of the runners was Tim Raines. And he could throw over there as many times as he wanted. Tim Raines, one of the best base throwers of all time, he was taking an average of 13 seconds between pitches before Tim Raines. And it eventually ended up stealing because he was the rock. He was the man. The other guy on the other side, 
was taking an average of 11 to 13 seconds in between pitches. With runners on, it was 16 seconds. And I wasn't even doing it right. I'm literally counting. I would hit start on the stopwatch. He would throw the ball and I would hit stop, start again. This is catcher throwing the ball back, him grabbing it, getting the sign and throw it again. And these guys were taking it between anywhere between 11 and 15 seconds. And a couple of those were with runners on. Now, I know it's not the most scientifically thing because I'm not doing exactly the MLB. Is My point is, is everyone sitting here saying this is ruining the game? This shouldn't be a thing. This shouldn't be a rule. Quit your fucking crying. It's not ruining the game. It's enforcing a fucking rule that's been a rule for 70 years that was never enforced. But it never had to be enforced because if you watch games from the 80s, watch games from the 70s, watch games from the early 90s, these guys pitched at that kind of pace. This kind of pace that the MLB is instituting, this kind of pace that the MLB wants these pitchers to throw in, isn't something out of weird, uh, they just made it up to, to piss people off and ruin the game. No, this is how the game's pace used to be. This is how the game should be. So stop fucking crying about it. If you're, and I already had one where there was people, uh, there was a game that was ended, bases loaded. It was, I forget who, the, I think it was the Red Sox and Braves, I want to say. I can't remember, but the guy wasn't acknowledging the pitcher at eight seconds and it was called a strike three and the game was over. It was ended in a tie. Now, if you want to bitch about anything and there any kind of thing that needs to be readjusted, it's the fact that if there's, you get 15 or 20 seconds pending runners on base. There should be no rule that the batter has to acknowledge the pitcher by eight seconds and looking at him. I think that's a bullshit thing or they get a strike. I think it should be up to the batter's responsibility. If he's looking down on the ground at two seconds and the pitcher throws the ball and he gets K'd up on a looking down at his feet when the pitcher throws and the pitcher throws a perfect strike, that's his own fault. Because that's the fucking the hitter's prerogative to be ready to go. And the pitcher doesn't have to wait for the batter to be looking at him to throw the ball. So I don't like that aspect of it. I don't think there should be a ball given or a strike given if a guy's not acknowledging the pitcher by eight seconds. It should be whatever because he should be able to pay attention. If there's one second and he throws it and he's still adjusting his gloves, that's his fault. Anyways, rant over about it. Just It's, it's literally not a big deal. The game's the pace, the flow is so much better. Anyways, let's talk about the Tigers. Fucking Christ. I knew I was going to rant about this for a minute. So, pretty much all the regulars got time over the first two days of spring training. And Nick Maton and Matt Veerling both hit home runs uh, so far with the Tigers in the first two games. I don't think uh, Nick Maton, I think he played the first game and Veerling didn't. Or Veerling played the first game and Maton didn't. I can't remember, but they both hit home runs today. Today was kind of a weird game. The Tigers were getting... were up one nothing for a little while and uh, oh they played the Orioles today they didn't play the Phillies today they played the Orioles today and uh, they they were up for a little bit but then Jace Fry came out and got lit up give up five runs and the Tigers were down like 10 to 1 or 10 9 to 1 and then Veerling hit a home run Maton hit a home run Jake Rogers hit a home run uh, what was the coolest part so far is Parker Meadows hit a home run in his first at bat with the Tigers in spring camp and Austin Meadows and Parker Meadows were both playing in the game together uh, in adjacent corners. One was in left, one was in right. And, of course, the first guy there to greet him was Austin after the home run to give him a huge hug. And I thought that was so cool, seeing those guys play together. And uh, on the fact that the Austin Meadows is wearing a Tigers jersey and is actually doing baseball activities while wearing a, a Tigers jersey when uh, competitive pitches are being thrown is, uh, you know, is a miracle unto itself. Uh, so far... A lot of it had everyone has everyone that's been a regular has gotten some ABs. Miguel Cabrera played the last two days. He's gotten a couple of hits. Carrie Carpenter got his first ABs today. Uh, he didn't get any hits. Spencer Torkelson got his uh, first ABs today. He flew out uh, and struck out. Riley Green had got his first ABs today. He didn't get any hits. But the fact that you know we're seeing these guys on the field. We're seeing some of these guys that, you know, the, for the third base competition finally get to compete and just get to see some of these guys. In early spring training, it's, it's kind of cool because you get to see a lot of guys that aren't going to make it out of camp uh, but are getting an opportunity solely because it's the early weeks of spring training. You know, when the first rounds of cuts come and all these guys get sent over to Tiger Town, you know, that's when you're going to see, like, some of these guys like Colt Keith and maybe not Parker Meadows, but they already said Colt Keith isn't making the team out of camp. They already announced that. Uh, you'll see how long Justin Henry Malloy, who did he pinched hit midway through the first game. He got hit by a pitch, but he played the rest of the game. So we'll see, like, you know, how many at bats Justin Henry Malloy gets, how many rounds of cuts he survives, because, you know, with uh, Scott Harris already saying they expected him to start the year at AAA. 
you know, he might make it a couple of cuts, but he might get sent over to Tiger Tom pretty quick because you don't know how many at-bats they're willing to give him right off the rip, especially considering they don't know, you know, if he's going to be how much third he's going to play, how much outfield he's going to play. And I think they're really looking at Cesar Hernandez, Andy Abanez, and Nick Maton for third base. And I think those guys are going to get the majority of the reps at third base. And Craig will probably get some too, but that's not really that important because he's versatile. I think they're looking for someone who's going to get, you know, the main load of third base reps over there, which would be those three guys. Um, Andre Lipsius, wow, he's another guy that will probably get cut pretty quick, could be in Tiger Town, no problem, uh, in the first rounds of cuts, but still going to see him. He had a fucking tank yesterday. What sucks is so far both games have been on the radio. So, you know, it's cool listening to Dan and Jim and, and Cool Hand, but, you know, I like being able to see with my own eyes what's been going on. Uh, but Garrett Hill was the opening day. I guess you could call it opening day, opening spring starter, pitched two really good innings. Erod pitched two really good innings, like effortlessly good innings as first couple times out of there. So, so far so good. I mean, like I said, Mayton Veerling already started out with a, uh, a, a home run each, which is pretty damn cool because, you know, they're going to need him this year, and there's there's a bats open for him. And we heard about the kind of pop both those guys have, but they really didn't have an opportunity with Philadelphia, so we'll see what they get. Donnie Sands actually made a debut today. It was cool to see Jake Rogers back. And, you know, before Jake Rogers got hurt and had Tommy John, you know, remember he was really starting to come out of his shell as a hitter and starting to finally throw some power. And, you know, to see him hit a home run. And today was one of those days, Lakeland, uh, Joker Marchant is one of those places when the wind's blowing out, balls fly out of that place i mean you could listen to some spring training games where there's nine home runs hit between each team so you know today was more of uh not a blowout win day so to see those guys you know hit a couple of bombs unlike versus yesterday where the wind was blowing out pretty good and there was more homers but to see those guys you know lace up getting their tigers unis each already hit a home run and then you know you can see parker meadows and lipsius and colt keith you know play justin henry malloy play this first week will be cool. You know, we get to see a lot of these guys are going to be in Tiger Town, get to see some dudes getting out of bat, get more of a feel, an idea who's going to be playing what, primarily where, you know, who's going to be the guys that, you know, they're they're looking to give an opportunity to make out. You know, I for completely forgot about Cesar Hernandez, and Cesar Hernandez was actually a, a really good second baseman for a, a while. He had, had had some pop, but when he was with Washington, he, he lost all of his power stroke, but... You know, the guy def defensively is really versatile. He can play, you know, a third, second, and the Nats actually had him in the outfield some last year. So I completely forgot about him, and it will be, you know, be interesting to see how much. If his power comes back any bit this spring and he does enough to, you know, make it out of camp. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see, you know, what scope looks like you know scope my brother and i were talking and scope looks like he's lost some weight you know hopefully you know he's only 32 years old hopefully he comes back and shows more of his power stroke that he had had before because the tigers can't have what they had last year with such a, a horrifically bad offense you know one of the worst they've ever had and dan dickerson had, had made a point and this goes to show you you know how bad al avila was at constructing a competitive team between walk slugging percentage and on base and home runs the tigers have been ranked either last or 29th in one of those categories for five years straight. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see what this team looks where, you know, Harris acquires all these guys and trying to reshape the offense and giving a new offensive identity and giving such a, a different cast of characters, ABs because of all the at-bats you had lost between Harold and Willie and Jamer. It'll be interesting to see what, what they do and, and how they look coming into spring. You know, spring is not indicative of what the team is going to be. You know, I can remember one year Ryan Rayburn hit seven home runs in spring training, and everyone thought this was going to be Rayburn's breakout year. Or there was a hitter named Mike Morris that used to do that every year. He'd hit 10 home runs every spring, and he'd get hurt by the end of April, and he would be done. But, you know, I remember Rayburn hit those seven home runs, and he hit one home run for the entire season. It was his worst year, and I think he was off the Tigers after that year. I can't remember what year it was. It might have been 15 or 14. But, you know, spring is not indicative of what are the future results are going to be come, you know, when the big lights come on and they're back at Comerica Park. But, you know, at least you get an opportunity to see, especially over the next, you know, I'd say after the next two weeks when some of these guys get sent down to Tiger Town and, you know, more of the bulk of the guys that had a legitimate chance of making the 26. You know, the guys on the outer edge, you know, your, your 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th man on your roster. You know, you'll get more of a chance to see what an everyday lineup is going to be. You'll get more of a chance to see, you know, what these guys can potentially do, where they're going to potentially fit. But, 
just seeing the Tigers on the field and, you know, just hearing Dana Jim's voice and Veerling and Maton already hitting home runs and Austin Meadows being back out there and everyone being, you know, on the squad. It's awesome. It's awesome because, you know, 17 starting pitchers last year, how many rookies we had to play. We can't have that this year. We got to have, you know, something better than a 65 win squad. So didn't mean to rant so damn long about the pitch clock, but I am so tired of people crying that it's ruining the game and it's destroying the game and the game's never going to be the same again. Listen, it's the same thing as the, the the pace is what it used to be back in the 80s. Go watch some fucking Tiger games from 1987 and you'll see like, oh, oh, there's nothing different. There's just a clock that actually enforces the shit now. So anyways, I'll be back next week. When more spring training games have gone on, we got a little bit more to talk about. We could talk about some cuts. We could talk about who made it and talk about who's looked good in their first week. So that's all I got for you guys so far uh, for early spring training thoughts. I'll be back. Go Tigers.